So did you check out some cool smart bulbs from our previous smart bulb comparison video? But now you want to install them and now you got that issue of someone turning your smart bulbs on and off and then you can't turn them on with your different voice assistant. I know you're probably thinking, well, I'm just going to put a piece of tape, maybe put a guard on top of it, and that way no one can turn the light switch on and off. No, don't do that. Never remove functionality while you're adding functionality to your home. We're going to show you some really easy steps to take a light switch and you'll be able to simply push the button and turn the bulb on and off without ever ruining the ability to turn your lights on and off with voice assistance and automations. And as a bonus, we'll also show you how to do a long press, set the bulb at full brightness, or if you want it a little bit lower, long press, and it'll go down to dim, and you want it back to full brightness, you long press and it goes back. So it's real simple. We'll show you a few steps and let's get to it. So with this project, we're going to be using the Tekken SR41 single pole light switch. We did flash it with the latest version of Tasmoda using the Tuya convert process. But we have shown this rebrand of light switch before. If you've checked back in our previous videos of the KU LED light switch, it's pretty much the same light switch. And of course, you can use any type of light switch flash with Tasmoda to replicate this exactly. There is other ways to do it with Z-Wave, Zigbee, and various other ones, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to show you how the easy process to do this with a Tasmodo light switch, as well as a Tasmodo light bulb. All with a few easy, simple steps. And not lose the ability to do dimming and colors, effects, etc. And still use the tried and true light switch on the wall that we all know, without losing that functionality. So of course yours will be typically in the wall, but if you can test it on the bench before you do that, go ahead and do that. It helps you make sure you have everything working before you go jump to putting it in the wall. We're going to be using the Cliff Quick Test like we always do and wire it up and we will be capping the red side here. Now in your wiring configuration, you will have it wired all the way and providing power to the lights just as you normally would. But for our test setup, we're going to be capping the power off so we don't get shocked. So we'll go ahead and put this in the Cliff Quick Test. And we'll go ahead and put this in the lamp. And then we'll show you the few commands to get this going. Let's get to it. So for the wiring, it's going to be your typical everyday smart switch wiring where you put the light switch in. Make sure you do have the neutral in the box and do feed the hot wire over to the light bulb. Now you think. Well, how are we going to do this? Well, when we do our few commands in Tasmodo, it's not going to cut off the relay in the smart switch. It's actually just going to send a command over MQTT straight to the bulb and leave power on the bulb itself. So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and jump into the console and we'll show you a few commands to get it done. So next, flip it over to the console. And you know what else? You're thinking about switching or flipping? You know what makes some good flipping PCBs? definitely PCB way. They make some awesome PCBs. They're really high quality. They got a short setup time and ship to your door very quickly. They always got some sort of special going on. You can do your own various project and get the PCBs sent right to your door. Check them out, PCB way. So once you have your smart switch set up and your smart light set up that you want to control, the first step we're going to do, we're going to show it using a switch because I do like to use the switch because it gives a fast response and it does give us two actions of the short press and the long press action. So if you go to configuration, go to configure template, and of course yours may be different than this based on the switch you use, but you'll be looking for button one. We're going to change that to switch one and we'll save it and let it restart. Now right off the bat, if you do go and push the button on the switch, you will notice it's only going to turn on and turn right back off based on when you're holding it. So what we need to do is we need to set a switch mode. Typically you'll do a switch mode one, five, and that's going to set us up to do a short press and a long press. And while we're at it, we're going to do set option 32 and we'll do seven. That's going to give us seven tenths of a second for the long press. 
The default is set up for 40, which is four seconds. And that's a long time to be sitting there holding the light switch. So once you have that set, you can go ahead and test the switch to make sure it does turn the power on and off just with a simple toggle. So if you don't think you have the switch mode right, a little debug command I like to do is a rule that just publishes the status of the switch no matter which way it's in. So we'll do a rule one on switch one, pound sign state do publish my slash test and you do percent value percent and what the percent value is is going to publish the actual state of the button or the switch and we'll do the end on and make sure you do rule one space one to turn that rule on and then we can test out the button on the switch here you push it once you can see we get a two for the payload and you continue to push it, you're gonna get two, two, and so forth. Now, if we hold it down past the seven tenths of a second, you will get that my slash test equals three, and that's gonna be your state of three to send to do other actions instead of just turning the bulb on and off. Now, the next thing we we'll wanna do is flip over to the bulb or the bulbs that you're wanting to control with the light switch. So in this example, we are using the Tekken SB50 version three bulb. And all we really need out of here, and yours may be a little bit different based on the topic, whether you're using auto discovery or not, which doesn't make a difference in this type of setup. We're gonna need the status of the topic. Just simply copy one of these out, and we're gonna use that as like a template per se. And yours may be like the name of the bulb slash stat slash result because that's the way it is in a auto discovery. Now we did mention if you wanna do multiple bulbs to keep them all in sync, say you have three and like say one light fixture in the room, not just one, you'll need to go into all three of them and set a group topic like we've done here, a group topic of bulb test, and we were testing all of our smart bulbs before, set them as a group topic that you would like to control all at once, and then all you have to do is send that one topic and those three bulbs will listen to that one topic at one time and change their brightness, their status, etc. If you still want to control them individually, you can still do that as well through like Home Assistant, Node Red, etc. So we'll go ahead and start a rule over the previous rule. We'll empty that one out just to be sure. And you'll notice the switch should go back active and it is changing the actual relay but as soon as we put in rule one and we per se steal the status of that switch it's going to decouple it from the relay and we'll leave the relay on at all times so we're doing rule one on switch one state equals two this two remember that's your short press we're going to do a publish and we'll paste in our little template we grabbed before and we'll change the first part to CMND, short for command. We'll leave the template how it is. And then we'll change the last part to power. And you can put it as lowercase or uppercase on power. The only part that is case sensitive is the actual topic itself. We'll type in toggle and then we'll end on. We'll hit enter and make sure you do see that the rule one is still on. If rule one is not on, just go ahead and type in rule one space one and it will turn on. So at this point, now we can actually just push the button on the switch and it will send over to the bulb, the toggle, and it sends it over instantly through MQTT. And that's how you control your bulbs straight from the wall without losing power because we know that all just sucks whenever someone goes in and ha turns the power off on your smart bulbs and you can't turn them back on through your automations or voice assistance. And this prevents that and allows the same functionality you've always known for a light switch on the wall. And you don't have to retrain anybody or even yourself. So what about the long press? Well, let's check out the long press and do a very cool rule for what we can do with smart bulbs. So for the next part, what we're wanting to do is do a long press action to toggle the light from a low dim setting to a full brightness setting without using a dimmer per se. And maybe we'll do one with a full blown dimmer soon. Under rule two, now remember there's only three rule buckets in Tasmoda. Now 
What that means is you can put as many rules as you want as long as you don't blow out the 511 characters. You just have to keep putting end on, then the on, in between, you can stack them all together. So to keep it simple, we're not going to touch rule one. So in rule two, we're going to start off with doing a on system boot. It's going to set up variable one as a zero. And that's just a memory variable. It's not stored in the actual flash chip itself. So the second part of the rule is on switch one state equals three. Now remember, three is the long press action. What it's going to do is add a one to variable one that we just set to zero. And that's all that's going to do when you long press the switch. Now the next part, it's going to watch this variable one. Whenever it sees the variable go up two or above, we want to roll it back over to zero. So basically we want to see that variable just do a zero, then a one, then a zero, then a one. It just kind of rocks back and forth. So what about the dimming? Well, hold on, we're getting to rule three. So here's where the magic happens. On rule three, we're gonna do when variable one state is zero, it will do a publish to that light bulb. Now, if you did a group topic for multiple ones, you will need to change this to what yours is for your bulb. It's gonna send the dimmer command and we're going to send over 15%. Now you're more than welcome to change the number to whatever your needs are in your room. And then end on. That's going to be when it's zero. Now when variable state equals one, so when it gets pushed again with a long press, it's going to send over the command, same thing with the dimmer of 100, and then end on, if you can see right there. Pretty much same command, except it's going to be 0 and then 1 and then 15 and 100. Now you can change these numbers up to whatever you need. Pretty simple commands. Let's throw it in the console and check it out. Now we will leave all the commands we did. That way you don't have to type these in during the video. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste in rule 2. So we got the one that sets the variable. And we'll just stack them in like so. And we'll make sure and read it through. Make sure you don't have any spaces or missing any type of syntax because the rule just won't run. Let's go ahead and press enter. And we'll make sure and do rule two, one to turn it on. And we can go ahead and give it a test to make sure. So we'll hold it down. And you can see it's adding the one. It shows it does have one in that variable. We'll hold it down again. And you can see the other rule kicks in because it goes to a two. So it flips in to zero and sets it back to zero. Exactly what we want. Now let's put in rule three. So we have rule three in. State is zero. It's going to be set to 15%. And then when it's one, it's going to get set to 100%. And we'll turn on rule three. And let's give it a test. We should be able to just push it once. So you can see up here, as we do push the button, Doing the short press, it is turning the light bulb on and off as we push the switch, just like you normally would. Now we'll go ahead and give it a long press, and there you go. There's the 100%. Give it a long press again, and we're back down to 15%. So real simple way, you can control your smart bulbs straight from the wall and even do the dimming without using a dimmer itself. So one last step you would want to do is you'd want the relay to always be on on the switch no matter what. You wouldn't want to bring it into Home Assistant or whatever because you typically would not want to turn this relay off unless you were swapping the bulbs and simply wanted to kill the power. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the power on state command and we're going to change it to keep the relays on at power up. So we're going to do power on state space one on the console. So we're gonna to go to the console of the switch. We do power on state space one. And what that's gonna do, again, that'll make sure that relay is always on because you will want the relay on of the switch so you can provide that power to your smart bulbs at all times. So that's it, wraps it up. It's a pretty cool little way to still control your smart bulbs and don't lose functionality of everything and retrain everybody, including yourself. It's always a topic that we do cover several times in Discord, Facebook, etc. And I wanted to go ahead and get the content down. And also I can reference it for myself as well. 
So stay tuned. We probably will do others with various other switches, dimmers, etc., to control different things and show you some back to basics things of how to do some real simple automations and keep things simple for everyone else in your home. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It does help bring future projects and future content to the channel. Thanks, everyone. So definitely give us a thumbs up on the video if you like the content and give us a comment down below on future things you'd like to see us do. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you can catch our next live stream and video. And y'all take care.